In this example, we look at designing a study. The research question we're investigating is, does participating in group work improve a college student's comprehension of course concepts? You can see I started to annotate this research question underlining what I think is the explanatory variable and the response variable. So to investigate this research question, the professor designs two studies. And I'm going to say up front, neither study is a great design. Um, and so we're going to analyze and explain uh, what's good and bad about these studies. So in study design one, uh, we poll 1,000 college students at campuses across the nation using the question, do you feel that you learn better when working in a group? In study design two, we identify 10 sections of a typical college course from colleges across the nation. Use group work in five of the classes and not in the others. Give a short quiz at the end of each class to test understanding of one key idea presented that class period. You can see I identified or an underlined the part in study design too about using group work in five of the classes and not in others because I think that's a manipulation in that study. So because both studies are based on the same research question, they have the same explanatory response variables. They're just different designs to try to research that question. So for both studies, the explanatory variable is participating in group work because that's what we think explains the change. The change that uh, we're identifying is if the comprehension of course concepts improves. So we say the response variable that the research study is going to try to measure are the comprehension of course concepts. So study design one is an observational study because they're polling students. Uh, they are polling students across the country. We hope they're using a random sample. They didn't tell us that. Um, there's no treatment, though. They're just asking students a question about their opinions based on their experience, but they're not manipulating those experiences. Study design two is an experiment since the group work is manipulated in five of the classes and not in the others. So then we want to think about what's the population being studied. Uh, in other words, what is the group that these studies are going to draw a conclusion about? So college students across the U.S. is a group that we are trying to make a conclusion about. We hope that the students in the studies are randomly sampled and randomly selected. We don't know that for sure, though. So the sample in study design one is 1,000 college students from across the U.S. In study design two, the sample is the students in those 10 sections. We don't know how big each of those sections are. They could be 30 students. They could be 50 students or more. So we can just say the students in the 10 sections, but not an exact count of the students. And then study design to our experiment, we want to think about what are the confounding variables that might realistically confound the results. So remember, to confound a study is to mix up the results so that we don't know what's contributing to the response. So the subject of the section surveyed could affect student opinions. They just said that they were typical college courses. So we don't know, are those math courses, English courses? And then the teaching style of the professor could affect things. The setup in the class size, how many students are in the class, how the scene in the room, if it's set up for group work or not, and many other uh, things could confound. So I hope in this example you see the difference between an observational study and an experiment and think about the setups.